So phase diagrams are a, essentially a graph where you're looking at the phases of a substance. So anytime for every substance they have their own unique phase diagram, but there's some common themes that we need to be able to identify. The first is a triple point. This is the point where all um, three states of matter will coexist. You can kind of think of this as the sweet spot. At this specific temperature and pressure, you can have all three states of matter existing together regularly. Okay, so it's when I say this, I don't mean like a glass of water with ice cubes in it. Those are not coexisting because your ice cubes are melting. It's a special temperature where both can exist for an infinite amount of time. So the normal boiling point or melting point are a value of melting and boiling under standard pressure, which standard pressure is 1.00 atm if you for, or 101.3 kilopascals. Uh, the critical point, this specifies the conditions, the temperature and pressure, where the liquid state of matter ceases to exist. So at a certain point, you can no longer have a liquid, and that's beyond the critical point. Um, the critical pressure and critical temperature are the points um, related to that on your graph. Um, so most often, sometimes the questions that you could see would be identification type questions. Other times what you'll see is asking you questions about the graph. So right here, um, notice how we this one for carbon dioxide is labeled for. You have solid, liquid, and a vapor. Um, so right here, this is my triple point. So it's kind of the center of the Y, if you think of it. Most substances will look identical to this. Um, they will have this triple point. Now, quite often, the triple point is not at a very practical temperature and pressure. Um, so for carbon dioxide, the triple point is at 5.11 atmospheres and negative 56 degrees Celsius. So it's not very practical for us to get to that point, but it does exist. This point right up here is my critical point. So remember, beyond this temperature and pressure, we no longer have... Um, the liquid state. So things to notice here, you're going to have, um, usually these aren't labeled with solid, liquid, and vapor. You have to kind of know where those are. So um, this is another example with water. Notice it's following the same pattern. The liquid is in the V-shaped part. Um, it, for water, the liquid state's just a bit bigger. And then you have solid and gas on either side. So on one side of the graph, we have pressure. On the other side, we have temperature. Uh, it just depends on the substance exactly what these values are. This graph isn't uncommon. Usually what's labeled are the key points. So you have the triple point with the specific values, and you have the critical point. Um, sometimes there's a few others thrown in, um, like the standard value. So for this, Standard pressure is right here, um, so we can only sublime, going from a solid to a vapor, for carbon dioxide, which makes sense because for us, carbon dioxide is usually a gas. We usually don't have liquid carbon dioxide. Um, so types of questions you could see. So identification, um, it could be like if instead of solid, it could be letter A, B, and C. Identify which would be a solid. The last type of question would be have if you go from one part to another. So if you go, let's say we go from here to here, where are we going? Um, so what type of phase change is occurring? Which solid to liquid would be melting? Um, or if we went from this direction, li vapor to liquid would be condensation. It would be the standard phase changes that you would have. So they can occur all throughout. Now, I do want to draw your attention to Waters, because Waters is a bit more unique. Waters phase diagram is unique because this line right here, notice how this line, the solid liquid line, um, it has a negative slope. This is uncommon. Every other phase diagram that I've seen, water or um, the substance has a positive slope. Now, one of the reasons for this is because 
if you think about what happens to water when it freezes, it actually is a lower density, like ice floats on top of liquid water. This is one of the re that's one of the um, supporting reasons why our um, phase diagram looks like this. So just note that water has this special um, unique property here. But most often with phase diagrams, you're on your tests and on your standard tests, it's going to be asking you questions about reading it. It's not going to be um, analysis quite as much. So then just to review, uh, we go from a solid to a gas, or let's fill in this chart. So taking a look at your phase diagram, I filled this in, this is all review. The thing that people usually forget um, is that freezing can also be referred to as sol solidification, which is be something becoming a solid. Um, I always think of water when I think of all of these terms because we can see water do most of these things um, with the exception of sublimation and deposition. Um, so sublimation is a solid to a gas and a gas to a solid is deposition. I always think of like depositing something um, so if we take a look on your phase diagram, the lines represent these phase changes. So depending upon where you are will determine the phase change that's occurring. So if you're going from a liquid to a vapor, that would be the evaporation component. Or if you're going from a vapor to a liquid, that would be condensation. Um, it just depends in which direction you're going um, as well. Sometimes they're, they'll give you um, specific values in between these to help you find spots on your graph. So this connects to something we call the heating curve. Now before we get to this, what I want you to think of is boiling water. Let's say you're boiling a pot of water. Um, what is the temperature of boiling water? It's 100 degrees Celsius. And we, um, now, the thing of boiling water is that water can't get hotter than 100 degrees Celsius in the liquid state. So when you have boiling water, it's a constant temperature. The only way for water to get hotter would be for it to evaporate. So if, you have, if you've ever seen a pressure cooker or so heard someone talk about a pressure cooker, a pressure cooker is holding on to the water vapor and adding more heat and pressure to the system, which will increase the temperature, causing the food to cook faster. Um, so this is a kind of a good introduction into what I like to call the heating curve. So for a specific substance, um, we're going to focus primarily on water because that's easy for us to identify. Notice there's different areas. So we have angled areas and flat areas. For the angled areas, that's where the temperature is changing. So we have specific phases here. So we have a solid, liquid, and gas. So the lines, the flat areas of our graph represent phase changes. So we know for water that water boils at 100 degrees Celsius and water freezes at zero degrees Celsius. We know these things. The question becomes though, what happens at these, these points? Okay, so we, when we go from a liquid to a gas, when we're heating, which I'm going to represent with a red arrow, we refer to this as boiling where evaporation is occurring. If we're cooling, so we're going backwards on this graph, I'm going to use a blue arrow to represent that, it's going to be condensation. So depending upon how much, well depending on the nature of your substance, will determine how long it actually takes in order for either the evaporation or the condensation to occur. So taking a look from going from a solid to a liquid, you have the same th things happening. So you have melting, which is when you add heat and freezing or solidification when you remove heat. 
we're going to think of this in terms of either adding or removing heat rather than temperature as much because it's a little bit easier to understand um, for when we do some of our calculations. So whenever you have a phase change, so whether it's at zero degrees Celsius for water or 100 degrees Celsius for water, the temperature will not change until all the substance has been converted to one phase. You have to have one phase for this to occur. I always t encourage students to think of boiling water because that's an easy experience for you to relate to. Melting is a little bit trickier because most of the time you, you don't have water at zero degrees Celsius where the melting is occurring. So it's a little bit trickier to see, but if you had water and ice and combine them at zero degrees Celsius, it would stay at zero degrees Celsius until all of it was melted. So heating curve graphs often, he, um, gr often use temperature versus time or temperature versus energy. Remember, heat is a type of energy. So during a phase change, heat is either being released or absorbed. So if we're removing heat from a system, we're releasing it. If it's going into the system, it's being absorbed. Whenever we melt a substance, so it melts a solid, it does not involve a temperature change. Any phase change does not involve a temperature change. So what is the difference between heat and temperature? We often talk about them as being the same thing, when in reality they're not. Temperature is the average kinetic energy of molecules, um, which we often use in Kelvin. Um, Kelvin temperature, remember, is Celsius plus 273.15. Even though we're taking the temperature, not all molecules are going to have the exact same amount of energy. It's a range, and we take the average of it. Heat is the amount of energy exchange due to a temperature difference. So we often use um, kilojoules here or calories to describe heat. So calories um, are that calories reading on food items is really the amount of heat that would be produced. So that's how they measure calories in food items for us so that we can know the approximate energy content and how our bodies will use it. So will it use it immediately? Will it store it for later? That's all up for debate, depending on what your body is like. Okay, so let's look at an example. A glass of hot water will give off less heat than a gallon of hot water. So in chemistry, a glass of hot water does not have heat. A glass of hot water has energy, which is given off in the form of heat. So heat can be given off or absorbed, but generally substances do not have heat. A substance loses or gains heat because of a temperature difference. Energy will flow in a way to even out the difference. For the energy lost by one system will be equal to the amount of energy gained by another system. So en energy loss is equal to energy gained. Therefore, an exchange of heat causes a change in temperature. So this leads us to something called calorimetry, which is a way for us to numerically calculate this.